You're watching InfoSec Bytes, a crash course in information security for journalists. We're based at the Centre for Investigative Journalism in London and supported by the Logan Foundation. In this tutorial, we show you how to use PGP to encrypt and decrypt files and how to work with PGP signatures. This video is provided for information only. It cannot replace the advice of a trained security professional. If lives or safety depend on your security, please seek the advice of an expert. The Centre for Investigative Journalism is a pioneer in providing expert information security training services to journalists and journalistic institutions. To consult with an expert through the CIJ, or to arrange a CIJ training session, contact the address on screen. The tutorial you are about to watch is part of a series on PGP, which you may wish to watch from the beginning. It also requires that you have watched our tutorials on the Tails operating system. If you haven't seen these tutorials, click or tap on the pop-up message to access the playlists. In the last video we looked at how to encrypt and decrypt text, and also at how to sign and verify text. In this video we're going to be looking at the same things, but this time working with files. One of the primary reasons you might want to do this is for your email attachments. You might be sending an encrypted email but if you only encrypt the text of the email, any attachments you might send will be in the clear. To protect the attachments, you have to encrypt them separately. It's actually really easy to do. Here, you can see we have several different kinds of files in our Tor browser folder. An audio file, a document file, a PDF file, and a video file. All of these files can be encrypted with PGP. Let's look at encrypting and decrypting first. To encrypt a file, Right-click on the file, we'll choose the video file in this tutorial, and find the Encrypt option in the right-click menu. Click it. Just like with text, you'll get a pop-up box asking you to choose the public keys you want to use to encrypt the file. As with text, tick the boxes next to the keys you want to use to encrypt it. You can also choose whether to use your own key. If you do, in the future you will still be able to decrypt this attachment, but if you don't, you won't. We'll tick our contact and our own key. Now, click the Sign Message As drop-down box at the bottom. As you can see, you can choose to use your secret key to sign the encrypted file, allowing your contact to verify that the file is indeed from you and that it has not been tampered with. Or, if you prefer, you can choose None, Don't Sign, in which case you will not add a PGP signature to the encrypted file. You may want to do this if you would like to plausibly deny in future that you sent this file. In this tutorial, we're going to choose to sign the file as well as encrypt it, so we'll choose our key in the drop-down box. Having chosen your options, click OK in order to proceed. If you chose not to sign the file, it will go ahead and encrypt it right away, but if you chose to sign the file as we did, you will be prompted for the passphrase to your secret key. Type it in and then press Enter. The file will now be signed and encrypted, and you will see a new file will appear beside the file. It will have an identical file name, except it will have .pgp at the end. This is the encrypted and signed version of the file. Encrypting files always creates a new encrypted version and leaves the original untouched. You have to be very careful to only send the encrypted version, the one with .pgp. The original remains unencrypted. Now that the file is encrypted, you can send it as a regular attachment. Simply attach the file to an email the way you would attach any file, making sure that you are attaching the correct encrypted version, and then send. And that's it. As for the return path, it's pretty simple. When you receive an email with an encrypted file, open the email and then download the attachment to your Tor browser folder, as you would a normal attachment. Navigate to the Tor browser folder and find your file. It will have the .pgp suffix. Now, right-click on the file and click the Open with Decrypt File option in the right-click menu. You will immediately see a pin entry window, prompting you for the passphrase for your secret key. Type in the passphrase and press Enter. A new file will appear next to the encrypted file. It will have the same file name, but this time without the .pgp suffix. This is your decrypted file. You'll notice the encrypted version of the file remains too, untouched. When you decrypt files, it always creates a new decrypted version, rather than replacing the encrypted version. 
If the file was signed by your contact, the signature will be automatically checked against your contact's public key during the decryption process. A notification will then pop up at the top of the screen telling you if the signature checks out. If it says valid, then the signature checks out and the file is verified. You can now be sure it comes from your contact. Sometimes the notification says valid but untrusted signature. The untrusted does not mean you can't trust the signature, you can. Untrusted refers to PGP's web of trust feature, which we're not going to cover in this tutorial. As long as the notification says the signature is valid, the verification is successful. So that's how to encrypt and sign files, and also how to decrypt and verify them. Before we finish though, we look at one more curious feature of using PGP with files, the detached signature. You can choose, if you like, to sign a file without encrypting it. When you do this, the original file is left untouched, but a new file is created, which is the signature. The signature can then accompany the original file, and your contact can use the signature to verify the original file. If the original file is tampered with in any way, the signature will no longer verify. So this is a good way of ensuring the integrity of the files you send, even if you're not going to encrypt them. Creating a detached signature for a file is really easy. Click on the file, in this case we'll use the audio file, and choose the sign option in the right click menu. A small window will pop up, asking you which of your secret keys you would like to use. Now click on OK. You will now be asked for your passphrase. Your secret key is needed to create the detached signature. Type it in and press enter. You will now see a new file appear beside the original file, with an identical file name, but now with a .sig suffix. This is the detached PGP signature. In this case, since we are working with a detached signature, you need both of these files. They must travel together to be of any use to anyone. So, when sending the file, attach both the original file and the .sig file, so that your contact will be able to use the detached signature file to verify the original. What about when your contact sends you a file with a detached signature? It's easy. First, open the email and download both files to the same place, to the Tor Browser folder. Once both files are downloaded, navigate to the Tor Browser folder. Now, right-click on the detached signature file, the one with the .sig suffix. In the right-click menu, choose Open with Verify Signature. The signature will now be checked against your contact's public key, to verify the file. Just like before, you will see a notification pop up at the top of the screen, telling you if the signature checks out. Once again, if it says Valid, then the signature checks out, and the file is verified. You can now be sure it comes from your contact. Detached signatures are not just used for signing email attachments. They have a much more important usage. Software developers, when they release versions of their software, often sign the files with their private keys. Why would they do this? Well, let's say someone hacked the website of a popular piece of software, and then replaced the downloads with fake or malicious versions of the software. In this case, anyone who downloaded that software could potentially be compromised. This isn't theoretical, it really does happen from time to time. Signing software downloads addresses this problem. When the developer signs the file, it means that having downloaded it, and as long as you import the developer's public key, you can check the signature and verify that the download hasn't been replaced or tampered with in any way. As long as you verify your downloads, you will be much safer. You should always verify your download before running the software. As an example, when you download the Tails ISO, it comes with a .sig file, a detached PGP signature, created with the Tails developer's keys. Tails itself comes with all of the developer's keys already in your PGP keyring, so there's no need for you to import the Tails developer key. To check that the download is authentic, simply follow the procedure we used earlier. Download both the ISO file and the detached signature, right-click on the signature file, and click Open with Verify Signature. A notification will appear at the top of the screen telling you if the signature is valid. If it is not valid, don't panic. It is not necessarily because an attacker has given you the wrong file. It may be because the file was not fully downloaded. You may want to try downloading it and checking again. If the signature is valid, the file is authentic. 
and you're good to go. That's it for our series on PGP. There's plenty more to say about PGP, but we've covered the basic features that you need to know about in order to use it properly. If you'd like to find out more about PGP, please see the link in the description for further reading. Thanks for watching InfoSec Bytes. If you found this video useful, please share it widely with your colleagues and coworkers. To support the Center for Investigative Journalism with a donation, please visit tcij.org forward slash donate. And if you would like to watch our other videos, please go to infosecbytes.org or subscribe to our channel below.